So I'm here with Kyle Reed. Um, he is a digital marketing consultant. Would you call yourself? <laughs> In yeah, <that>. sure. <laughs> um, I came across Kyle because he was interviewing one of my favorite artists that I've been following for a long time. And what they were talking about as far as uh, artists promoting themselves really struck a chord and was kind of right along the lines as I tried to push to the artists that I'm working with. So I wanted to have him on just to kind of talk about that, introduce him to you guys in my mu local music scene and because uh, he's someone that could be an awesome resource for you guys, definitely. So um, welcome, Kyle. Where You're coming from Tennessee, you said? Nashville, yeah. Nashville, Tennessee. I am uh, 10 minutes outside of downtown and 15 minutes from Franklin. So I'm in the, the sweet spot of Nashville, Tennessee, I call it. Very cool. So tell us a little about, uh, tell me a little about yourself and then like um, how you got into this um, and how you got into marketing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I've been uh, doing digital marketing, marketing as a whole since I was like probably 22. So I'm 33 now. So that's 11 years. Uh, when I moved to Nashville, I moved to Nashville 10 years ago. Uh, and I kind of moved here with the idea of going on the road with artists and doing digital marketing for them. Uh, at the time, uh, it was a crazy idea. A lot of people, had, when I pitched it, they looked at me like I was silly. Uh, now today, that's pretty standard. And, and I think a lot of artists would kill to have a young kid for free. I would do it for free. I was telling people I'd do it for free. Uh, just needed a bunk. And so I moved here with that concept uh, and talked with some artists, worked with some artists and tried to get them to allow me to do that. They didn't get it. Uh, so I started to volunteer at a church in town and then quickly moved into helping them with their communications. And then they hired me to be their communications director. Uh, worked with them for a couple of years. And then I uh, went and worked at a record label here, uh, Provident, which is the Christian division of Sony Music. And that was awesome. That changed the, the course of my career, uh, just doing that alone, being able to uh, get access first off to artists, but then also to, it kind of grew my marketing chops and really gave me an opportunity to work with large brands and, and try things out. So that really grew and stretched me. Uh, and, but I left, I left there. Uh, I remember the day I left, the day I left was when the senior vice president of the label said, there are still people out there who buy records and we need to sell to them. And I said, this is not the place for me. And I quit. Uh, I was able to quit because my wife owns, a, we were talking about this before we started recording, my wife owns a clothing store here in Nashville. And so I went and worked with her and uh, we worked together for like a year and a half. And then we both decided that it's better for us to be married than to be business partners. And so I quit that and I went full time on my own. At the time I was working with some artists in town um, on the side. And so I was able to kind of make an easy jump to just naturally develop into helping them with social media and marketing. And that's what I do today. I work with, uh, I have five artists I work with, and then um, I have a, a playlisting brand I work with, and uh, and then my, my own stuff. Uh, and so yeah, I've been doing that for now coming up on three years, and uh, it's been great. Were you ever a musician yourself? Or were you just kind of? I, yeah, I used to play drums a lot. And mm -hmm. uh, when I moved to Nashville, I, I've literally not played drums since I moved here because everybody's really good. <laughs> and so, it was a lot easier for me to be in like the production side of the music than, uh, than actually like playing. But yeah, I used to play, uh, I, I'm from St. Louis. I used to play like two or three times a week uh, with just play out or play at churches or this or that. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of sad. I miss it. <laughs> you should pick it up again, man. <laughs> I, I know I should. My wife probably would not be pumped about it, but. Uh, so tell me about, just tell me about like someone lo recently that you've worked with that you've helped them kind of reach the goals they're looking for. Yeah. So, uh, so one of my artists that I've worked with and I've loved working with him for a while is, uh, David Crowder. He, um, he's a Christian artist. Uh, a Christian worship scene around here would know exactly who you're talking. Okay. About. Yeah. Awesome. I was like, I, I, I wanna, I'm not going to assume that people know who he is. Uh, so I've been working with him now coming up on three years and it's been, uh, it's been awesome. Uh, he's really easy to work with, uh, but we've been able to do some cool stuff. Recently, we just started this campaign where we, you know, that site Cameo. Have you heard of Cameo? I No, I haven't. So Cameo, you can pay celebrities to basically record whatever video you want them to say. But it's like all these like, like celebrities from back in the day. Like those <laughs> are the people that are on it. So it's like right. Tommy Lee. We did one with Tommy Lee. Oh, we did one with Flava Flav. We <laughs> did one with um, Gary Busey. 
uh, just people like that. So we ran this campaign where on Mondays we were kind of playing off this idea of like Monday motivation. And so they would record him and say, Crowder, you know, like, stop calling me, man. Like you got this, you can make it through like fun videos. So that was a fun campaign we did. That was really unexpected that people were not expecting. Um, but he's a lot of fun to work with. I've worked with him for three years. And what's been cool with him is we were able to take his Instagram. He, when we started working with him, he was at 214,000 followers. And over the two years, we doubled that number. Wow. And so we're right at like 556. Uh, wow. So two or three, yeah, two and a half years. So yeah. that's been really cool to like see the growth of him and, and just the movement through and like watching him just grow in that time, but also seeing like the things we did worked. And when a large audience got a hold of it, it just kept snowballing. Yeah. So he's someone I work with. Um, and then I'm working with a country artist here. She's local. Uh, she's independent artist. Her name's Olivia Lane. Mm-hmm. And we are currently right now working on a virtual tour for her. So uh, we've been working on that and that's been fun. And then she has a single coming out May 8th. So we've been kind of working through, and I know for a lot of, uh, you know, independent artists, they're having to deal with like distribution. Who's going to help me distribute this and who's going to help me market this and how am I going to spend my money? And so that's been a new world for me. Most of the artists I work with have labels and so I'm kind of used to that and they have management. She doesn't have any of that. Um, and so, uh, but she's got a cool story where she's uh, a songwriter and she owns a song, like a publishing company, but then she's also an artist for herself. And so kind of navigating that has been a lot of fun and I've learned a ton. Okay. Very cool. Um, yeah. so when you get in, it's like say an artist reaches out to you to mm-hmm. kind of help them with their digital marketing. What are like kind of the first things you look at? Like, what are you, what are you looking for? Yeah. So that's a great question. Uh, a lot of artists reach out and they go, Hey man, um, I've got a song coming out in two weeks. Can you like help me? And at that point, I know that we're in trouble um, due to the fact that there's a lot of things that I know are probably not going to be set up. So that's one artist I get. Then I get the more of the artists who have a little bit more of an establishment and they're wanting to take their brand and they're wanting to, to grow it. So those are kind of the two people I work with. Those artists are typically ones that have like a record coming out in six to seven months. It gives me a lot more space to create a marketing plan, to work with them, to make sure things are running. So most artists though are kind of in camp one, especially independent artists. Um, though the, the things that I normally look at with them is I first look at and ask them, what are your goals? So for me, everything starts with a goal. What are you wanting to accomplish? And like, let's get really clear about that. So when you can get really clear about your goal, it helps me as a marketer, but it also helps you and your audience know exactly where you're going. So you can create content off that. You can follow objectives. You can decide where you want to spend your money. I know it's hard being a creative and a creator and having a small budget and you want that dollars to, to work. You, you don't want to just throw money at things. So that's the first thing I look at. The other thing I look at is their audience. Like who are they talking to and do they know who they're talking to? And so that would be the next step. So start with a goal, but then have clear objectives. Uh, who are you talking to? What are, where do they live? What do they do? How do they operate? What kind of music do they like? Like all those different things, answer all those questions. And then the third step is to create a plan. So how are we going to get to these people? So those are the things that I start with. I usually also dive into their accounts. I do an audit on their Instagram and on their YouTube and kind of make sure, are we, you know, have you posted in the last three weeks? You know, things like that, just kind of trying to make sure they're up to standards. I spend time working on their Facebook ads and looking at their audiences. Um, you know, do you have an email list set up? Do you have uh, lookalike audiences through Facebook stuff, things like that. So a lot of the time is me kind of checking off the, the standard things that they should already have and making sure we're good and then putting together a marketing plan for the actual single or album or music video, whatever they're trying to put out. Do you have like an overall philosophy for how you approach marketing or is it like changed by the artist or yeah. what their focus yeah. is? Yeah, that's a great question. Yes, I do. So I am the biggest fan in the world of Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, if you just a, a warning on him, he, he curses a lot, but uh, you can get past that. You're great. Uh, so I follow his model and his model is this is give, 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 then ask. So the, 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 the kind of the theory that he has, so I, it's kind of a twofold thing is I'm big on um, putting the, what I call deposits in your bank of your audi- of your fans, of your audience. So how, so if you're going to take a withdrawal, you're not going to want to take a negative withdrawal. So you're going to want to put a lot of 
deposits in by giving them content, by serving them, by building that relationship and developing the super fan as that, that term has been being thrown around a lot by artists, but it's right. You want to develop that super fan, that core audience. Um, Kevin Kelly writes a great article called a thousand true fans. Just Google a thousand true fans, read that article. It's really, it's exactly right. If you can develop a thousand true fans, if all you can develop a great living, um, even if you can develop a hundred fans, right? So that's kind of my first model. The other model I have is more from a content standpoint. I try to not, um, again, with time, uh, with money, I try to kind of come what I call pillar content. So I try to create one big piece of content that I know I can use in eight different ways. So let me give an example of that. We're doing this interview with you and I right now. Um, I might record this interview and then take, this is my pillar piece. So this is an interview. There's a lot of things that have come out of this interview that you've asked me. Uh, that's my big thing. I might release it as a podcast or a YouTube video or whatever it is, mm -hmm. but then inside of it, I'm going to go in and cut four parts of this. And the question you just asked me, what's your philosophy on marketing? Boom. That's a video. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you get started? That's a video. And then out of that as well, I might make like a quote image out of that. I might make a, I might jump off and write an email about that. So that's my other philosophy is just try to think, how can I create one big piece of content, but use it in several different ways. Because as we know, with social media, you got to be consistent in your posting and putting stuff out there. Mm -hmm. So give first and then go in for your ask. But then also think about how can I create content that's working for me? You know, I think the overwhelming thing is for a lot of artists, they might spend money on like a music video or, or a lyric video or something like that. And they might spend their budget and they post it. And it's like, and then like next week, they're like, what should I post? I guess I'll post that lyric video again. And it just, you know, it gets a little old. So if you can think about a way to like, make your money work for you or make your efforts work for you it will allow you to create a lot more pieces of content and also allow you to talk about the song or about a thought in several different ways that doesn't get old and stale mm -hmm. i find that some of the artists that are local to me tend to like they'll spend the money making a record or a video and they won't do a whole lot to prepare for it they'll throw it out and kind of and they won't say this, but it's kind of a, if you build it, they will come mentality where it's yeah, just, yeah. they think people are going to rush to them, but then yeah. it happens. And I, I feel, I feel really bad because some of them are great and mm -hmm. they're not doing a whole lot out about it. So um, what are some like stuff like that where they don't do anything where you said like they waited too long beforehand, mm -hmm. like what other mistakes do you see artists making all the time that, that they should be avoiding? Yeah, so they the one of the biggest mistakes that artists make, um, the one you're talking about, or really all artists, is they don't think of themselves as a business. And you 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 are a small business as an artist. You you need to be curating an email list. You need to be curating Facebook audiences. You need to be curating a following, um, because if you don't, it's what you said. It's the, this idea of I will build it and they will come. It just doesn't exist anymore. There's so much music and there's so much. Um, good quality stuff out there to get discovered is really, really hard. Uh, so that's the first mistake they make is it's kind of like they, they, they stick with the artist side and they're like, you know, I'm just going to focus on the art. Um, and, and I don't care what happens. And that day is over. Um, now the benefit of that is that more artists are, be, are able to be discovered because there's now more places to discover artists. So it's a give and take. But the reality is, is to not focus on treating your business as a business, because it is a business, is a massive mistake. And artists do that a lot. Um, they don't think about costs. They don't think about, um, you know, customers. They don't think about the customer journey. They don't think about merch. They don't think about those things because they just, it's like, I just want to make the music. Right. And it just, even, even if you got a record deal, I'm telling you right now, I've worked with record companies and at record companies. None of that will happen for you. They will not do any of that for you. All they care about is people purchasing or streaming on Spotify and they're not, they're just, and, and on top of it, unless your song hits at radio for them, they don't care about you. Right. So it's, it's all a numbers game for them. So if you're not doing that for yourself, you know, you, you, I mean, to be a little harsh, you have a hobby. Right. And I, I find some people there at the same time, they're complaining in one side, like, oh, we're not making any money because of Spotify. It's just little pennies. And on the other, but, but then when I say like, well, why are you considering your audience when you're writing your song? They're like, no, no, it's just the art. Like, see what happens. And yeah. if you put that stuff in, like you're saying, it's a hobby. Don't think of it as you're going to make any money if you're treating it. Yeah. As a hobby. <laughs> and you're going to have a great sounding record on your computer that you can show your kids. And, and if that's the reality, that's what you want. Awesome. But 
the reality of, yeah, just making it and putting it on Spotify and, and posting on a, on a Facebook post or YouTube, it's just, there's so much stuff out there. Yeah, absolutely. Don't make the mistake of thinking that, you know, you're just going to be all that because you put something yeah. out. I feel like well, that's and, a lot. either they don't, they have really bad expectations of what's going to happen if they release a record or they have no information at all. Yeah. And I think the struggle is, is a lot of people look at virality or they look at these artists who've come out of nowhere, but what they don't, you know, what we don't realize is the backstory of how they got there, whether they've been doing it for 15 years or, uh, you know, you like look at the, you might've read articles or people are watching this have read articles about this, but like the little Nas example, mm -hmm. like he put out old town road and it, he, he went crazy on that, making memes, putting the song in memes. He was DMing on Instagram hundreds of meme pages a day with mm -hmm. memes in that song in there to make it go viral. And if you look at the, the chart of it, it goes like this. And then he hits this peak. And then that's when he added the Billy Ray Cyrus into it. And then it went up even more. But he exploded on TikTok was one way he did it. But he, he said in an interview, he was emailing or he was DMing on Instagram hundreds of pages a day trying to get people and making memes himself of, of popular memes. He was repurposing them, putting a song in there over and over and over and over. And so, you know, the reality of it is, is it's like, that's not viral just because you wrote a song. That's him busting his butt. He made the song and mm -hmm. then he went out and did it. And that's what Derek Webb, when I talked with Derek Webb about this, um, he was, he talked to me and he said, he's got two brains. He's got the, the creative side where he's actually making the song and he's in that world. But he made his record that he just put out nine or 10 months ago. And in the last six months, he's been in the marketing and business side. Right. And he switches his brains back and forth. He never stayed in one angle. Because he said, if I stay in the marketing world, when I'm making my record, I can easily slip into what's commercially viable and like what will help me. But, but if I don't stay in the creative world, I won't make what's needed. And if I don't switch out of the creative, I won't do the marketing things that are needed. So I think artists have to have both you have to have a right and left of that. Right. Or have someone on your team who knows how to do that. Totally. Yes. And be, and then also I deal with this a lot with artists. They don't trust that person on their team. So yeah. that's the other side. If you do hire that person, man, let them, let them do it and follow through with what they say. It's yeah. It'll benefit you. When you're, when you um, are starting to market with someone, like obviously fame is a terrible goal. <laughs> yes or because you won't get famous what realistic you will not get famous yeah what are realistic goals that you put in place like what are the kind of things that you're trying to reach with someone in order to, to actually make some money in order to something that, to be realistic something you can realistically reach yeah totally so to me again it's like back to the broken record side of things like goals so if you can break down your goal of like how much money do you need to make like realistically mm -hmm. what does that look like you know, like this is the business side. So like, it's like my wife owns a clothing store. Like one of the things that she needs to know is like how much, what's the average order? And then like, what's the average value of a customer? And what does it cost to acquire that customer? So as an artist, you need to do the same thing. You need to figure out what's my, what's my mode here? Do, am I a Patreon person? Do I just put everybody through Patreon and I serve those 50 to 500 Patreon supporters? If that's what I do, then that's great. You don't have to focus on anything else. Your Patreon. If you're not, if you're a merch person, if you're a, um, if you're a sales, if you're like, I sell records, I sell albums, like I focus on that and that's my audience. That's what they want. So define that first, but then also define what's the value there. Because let's say you are the album person. Well, how much does it cost to make that album? How much does it cost to uh, print that album, ship that album? You've got to break it down that way. So that's the first thing is like, what is your goals and how are we going to get there? Okay. What do you need? Like how much money do you need to live, um, live on or whatever that looks like for you? And then break it down and start to work backwards of like, well, then how would I get there? How would I go about this? So that's kind of the first thing. But then the other side of it is too, that I would say is um, the focus on data and fans is, is now more valuable than ever. Um, being able to really truly know who you're talking to and knowing that you can push a button or a lever and that people will respond is, is huge. And having that built in is so important. Um, you know, we go back to the Derek Webb example, he's been running these virtual shows and they're really great, but he's worked for so long to develop and build his fan base mm -hmm. that when he puts out a virtual show, they, they go, they, 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 they support him on Patreon. They go to these shows, they buy his records. 
because he's just developed that audience and knows exactly what they're talking about. So that's another thing I, I really try to get into with an artist. And, and it really starts when they're making the album. That's when the marketing starts. It, it, you know, you, most artists make an album around a concept or around ideas. Well, that's where the marketing starts too. So if you're in the studio and you're making a song about, you know, your kids or about, you know, whatever you're about love, uh, the marketing starts right there because you're going to want to expound on that topic. And then you're going to want to think about who's going to listen to this song. Right. So how valuable then would you say it is for people who are, when they release, they're focusing on uh, reaching out to blogs and Spotify playlists to try to get yeah. more streams. Is that worth it? Is that part of it? Is it just it's so hard? Yeah. I mean, you know, getting in a Spotify playlist can obviously have its benefits, but the, the, it's now, unless you pay, it's really hard. Number one, mm -hmm. a lot of the distribution companies that will pitch to DSPs for you. I just don't see a lot of success with them, but it's, it's kind of like this weird, I don't really have a good answer for this because it's kind of this weird world of like, when you do get on playlist, it, it can be great. And mm -hmm. the way the Spotify algorithm works is that they, you know, they're watching you in these smaller playlists and they'll just keep moving you up. So there's a lot of benefit there. But I think that you don't need someone to do it for you. You can probably do that yourself. Um, that'd be my first thing. Uh, I think it, it's, a, it's a discovery thing. There's a lot of um, discovery that needs to happen. So mm -hmm. if that's your goal, then yeah, you, you're going to need to start reaching out to all these people. I think borrowing their platform is huge. Going on podcasts, going on blogs, going on their accounts, asking to do Instagram lives, all those things add up. So sure. That's why I don't really have a good answer for it. Uh, but from a Spotify standpoint, I think it's definitely worth investing in figuring out how to get on some of these playlists or, or making that work. But you know, the other struggle is too, is you'll get playlist, playlist and placement, but it's also like important where you're placed on the playlist. Because if you're, if you're on a 200 song playlist, but you're track number 70, I mean, and you paid money to get that, it, it's not going to, it's not right. going to work for you. There's not going to be a return on that too. No. And it's just, it's the same thing with YouTube. That's hard, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you're a bigger artist and your song gets into their, you know, topics or in their recommended, you know, that's great. And you'll generate millions of views, but for most people, they're going to get 500 to a thousand views on their video. And it's just, that's definitely not going to pay the bills for you. Right. right. I Spotify. Like from the observations I've made people chasing streams is almost like, as invaluable as chasing likes on your Facebook. Yeah, you know, totally. Like, it's You're like, right. it sounds great. Yeah, like I got 10,000 streams on Spotify mm -hmm. and I got produ I hear producers who are touting that to their clients. Like I got this artist to get this many, but it's like, but what is the return on that? Yeah, and I think that that's where we have to flip the mindset, right? So there is a return on it, but it's how you use it. It's the data that you use or it's the, the message that you put out there. So I was just on a call before this uh, with some guys and we were talking about a campaign we ran a while back on TikTok with this um, bigger artist in our genre. And we spent $10,000, okay, on this influencer campaign through TikTok. And it was just to get these influencers to play the song in the background as they did whatever they do on TikTok. So we do that, right? And it got a lot of impressions, you know, millions of impressions. Did that move the song in any way on the charts? No. Did that generate more following on Instagram? No. But the whole goal, and this is my goal, this is so important. The whole goal was to show the radio, because it, it was at um, Hot AC, the song was. It was to show the radio, look at all these impressions from TikTok. And then we gave it to the radio team and said, hey, go use this data to get us more ads. And it worked. That worked. And it kept the song in the radio. The song had been out for a year and a half. That's the crazy thing about it. It was been out for a year and a half. And we re- we re-engaged it. Um, you know, granted, we had a bigger budget to spend, but we weren't going in no, thinking that this song is going to go viral off of us doing a $10,000 TikTok campaign. But what we did was we knew we could use the data to tell a story. So if you're going to do that, if you got these people touting, I'll get you all these streams. Okay, you can go for it, but figure out a way to use that to get more shows to, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is that you need to do to show people, hey, look over here, you know, at this thing. So that there is a way to use it. It's just, you got to, it's what they call in the industry that, you know, vanity metrics, a likes or vanity metrics. It's great to have a lot of likes, but it, it's not really going to get you anywhere. But if you can use it to your advantage, 
if you know the game, it, it's it's really valuable. Sure. Um, I know in our in our local scene, we have a lot of people who are doing like the restaurant and bar thing on a normal well on a normal week. They're doing the restaurant yeah. two or three nights a week. What would you say to them who they're releasing music once in a while? Um, but they're playing on a regular basis to make money at shows and try and build an audience. But what, what can they do better? What, what should they be looking for in that sort of scene where they're not really recognized outside of this local scene yet, or how can they grow that kind of thing? Yeah. So again, um, it, there's a couple things to think about. You, first, you can think about like the experience of the people in the crowd. Like, what do they want? Like bringing your merch to that experience is not going to probably work. Um, people are eating or at a bar or whatever, hanging out, or maybe they're actually going to a, a coffee shop or whatever it is. Um, to go buy a shirt for $35 is probably not going to work. But is there a way that you can do something to capture their data that you could follow up with them later? Could you say, hey, text me. This is my text number. Text me. Uh, would you sign up this email? Like something like that. So if you can think, so you step back and put yourself in their shoes, what kind of experience would they want to have? So that's the first thing. The other thing is, is that this is a prime key place where you can start to create some content. So is there a way to film? Is there a way to stream it live on YouTube? Is there a way to, you know, maybe you're filming the whole show and there's this funny interaction or someone requests something, you know, you have taken some requests, um, you know, and someone shouts out others um, outside of Freebird, someone shouts out something fun that you want to play. There's a piece of content. So it's, a, it's, it kind of is back to what we're talking about. It's, you know, it's that fake it or make it, fake it till you make it mindset. Is there a way that you can, it's not lying, but you're kind of appearing a little bit more like, hey, look, like I'm, I'm not playing the shows. We did this, we had this fun moment. And what happens is, what I found is that when you start to put yourself out there and you tell people the narrative that you want them to believe, um, they'll start to believe it. So they'll start to see like, wow, uh, you know, Kyle's playing a lot of shows. That's cool. I'm going to go check him out. Man, Kyle keeps like appearing in my feed a lot. Like, and you become top of mind. They're going to have to touch you multiple times. You know, as we, as anyone knows with kids or with a busy life or whatever is going on, you, you have great intentions to go do things, but you forget. <laughs> and right. so there's, you know, you might, Jason, you might tell me later on, you got to go listen to this podcast. And I'll, oh yeah, I'll check that out. But then I go right back to my life and I forget. And then, you know, this is why, this is why when, uh, like I bought a truck not too long ago and then everywhere I looked, there was a truck on the road. And I'm like, how does everybody have an F-150? Yeah. But it's because it's top of mind. Right. So, I've had, um, I had like when I was paid, posted like stuff on Facebook, like two or three days a week, I had someone tell me like, oh, you're putting stuff up every day. And I'm like, really? Exactly. It's, it's crazy, man. I don't, you know. But it's crazy too, because what people will do is they start to associate, I, the way I view it is like, there's a hundred people in a room and they're looking around and like, okay, who's going to take charge here? And that one person that steps forward and says, even if it's not the best, but they say, hey, this is what we're going to do. Everyone kind of goes, okay. Most people will sit and go, I'll follow that. And what I found for myself personally, when I'm starting to put out more content about my, 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 my thoughts, my this, people like automatically move me into this like expert. And it's, it's been wild, man. It's been wild of like the last three weeks, I've posted more than I ever have because I finally said, I'm going to do this for myself. And I'm getting all these people messaging me going, yeah, like, um, what do you think about this? Or you should do this. Or it's crazy how many people are coming out of the woodworks asking me questions. And so I think the more ways that you can position yourselves as this person who's creating music, who's playing these shows, you're going to start to see the, the other side of it too, is there's a lot of restaurants out there that just need entertainment. They have a budget for it. They have they have things put put aside so when you start putting yourself out there you're going to start to see more things come in so i would think about if i'm going to go to the show i have two goals one how can i get half the room's information so that i can follow up with them later so that they remember me and then two how can i create at least one to two pieces of content from this show that's awesome so um, you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like you focus a lot of your attention on um, Instagram. Uh -huh. So uh, why, why is it that you focus on Instagram and why is that so important? I mean, it's just the platform I like the most. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I do. I, I, so Instagram is interesting. Um, I would say for Instagram has a lot of discoverability still left to it with hashtags. Mm -hmm. um which is nice 
uh, there's that. The explore page is super powerful if you can get on it. It's hard, but you can do it um, if you stay consistent. I still think YouTube is probably the most important platform there is. And the reason why I say that about YouTube is, is that YouTube is the one platform where you can go and see someone who has a million subscribers on YouTube and have, you know, go to their YouTube or go to their Instagram, their Twitter, their Facebook, and they have massive followings there. Mm-hmm. Or you can go to Instagram and see someone who has 500,000 followers and go to their YouTube and they have like 40,000 subscribers. So what I found with YouTube is YouTube affects the, the, the wide variety of social media because people who discover there, they, they go out and they want to touch that because YouTube is a storytelling platform. It's, it's the one place where it's all about story and the way you present yourself. And mm-hmm. so people want to get more touches because then when they go to Instagram, it's a different, it's a different medium to connect. It's more image based. It's more 15 second videos, but they want to follow on. They want to follow along. So YouTube is super important to me. Uh, TikTok, I mean, it's, it, it, don't be afraid of it. It's not, you know, it is a lot of people doing dances and this and that, but it's not anymore. TikTok has evolved into a social network. And so the stuff you're posting on YouTube um, or Instagram, go post it on TikTok, but don't just throw it up there. Study it. Look at what other people are doing. Look, use it how they're using it. Like, like if I was to make an Instagram video right now, I would make it, I would, you know, it'd be a minute long, but to go to TikTok, it doesn't work like that. You need to put captions on it. That's really important. You need to pick featured songs that they're, that they're recommending or trending song. You need to play off that. So there's different ways to use it. But think about that way. But the reason I focus on Instagram is because it's just, I mean, gosh, five years ago, it was Facebook. I mean, I had, I had an artist page I was working on when I worked at the record label, we went from 1 million followers. um, And in a year we went to 4.3 million. Like that was like, we were, our organic reach on that page per post was one, 1 million to 2 million, every single post. And that was just five years ago, five or six years ago. And I worked at the record label. What's that? This is on Instagram? That was Facebook. Facebook, okay. So that's how powerful Facebook used to be. Now, dude, you're lucky if you get 10,000 people to look at your page. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it evolves. Right now, Instagram is the platform. Um, a lot of people are like, what should I do on Twitter? I don't like Twitter. That's fine. Don't do it. Like, just don't do it. Twitter is a, a different beast. The biggest thing I recommend, regardless of the platform, is use it as natively meant to be used. Sure. Don't just make one video. You know, it would be a shame to take a video like this interview and just post it everywhere at the same format. Because on YouTube, the way, or I'm sorry, on uh, Instagram, the way it works is you need to put a, you know, you put a title at the bottom and you need to put captions at the bottom. Like that's the format that people are using. So it's important to, you know, whatever platform you enjoy, use it natively. Um, mm-hmm. And don't be afraid of things like TikTok because it, your message still carries through. It's still the same principles. It's just a little bit different of a form. When you say like you should be posting consistently, what do you mean by that? Is that every day? Or is every that- day, yes. So your audience needs to have expectations of what you're going to do. So you need to a, be realistic with yourself. What can you do? But if you're coming and saying, I can post once a week, then I mean, again, we go back to the hobby thing. Like, like that just doesn't work. Um, if you like for me, I'm trying to commit to five to six posts a week. That's my goal. Okay. Um, for my artists, it's every day. Uh, and it sometimes is twice a day. So depending on what you're able to do and what you're able to commit to, uh, it's important that you stay consistent. So for instance, on um, Instagram, the insights page is really valuable. You can go in there and you can look and you can see when are people, you know, look at the three, go into the far right side of your account and look at your audience and then pick the day and look at the hours and look at when they're most active um, with your content. Try to post around there. Uh, but whereas with YouTube, uh, you can do the daily video, which would help you tremendously. But if you can just like say, Hey, every Wednesday at 3 PM, I upload a video, put that in your channel, like put that on your uh, channel page every Wednesday, 3 PM, new video, stay consistent with that people want consistency. They want to, um, they want to know what to expect, but also the algorithm and the, the way these platforms work is they want consistency. They reward that. And they want to see that they want to see you staying consistent. They, they can make sense of it. Um, and then they're, so here's an interesting thing. Some might know this, some might not. Go to your Instagram. Uh, if you go to your followers, it will show you at the top of, I'm sorry, go to who you're following. It'll show you at the top, the accounts that you interact with the most. And then under that, it'll show you the accounts that you interact with the least. And so what's interesting about that is clearly, and we've known this for a while, but clearly Instagram is tracking 
for the algorithm because they want to serve you up that content, they're going to show they're, they're going to show it to the people who are interacting with your account the most. Staying consistent will allow you to stay in front of those people. And it's just it's just really good for you. It it continues to tell your brand story, it continues to tell who you are. Um, and the other side of it too is that a lot of people they won't do that. Mm-hmm. A lot of people will will post once every other week. And if you're out posting, you're going to be ahead of them. So yeah. staying consistent, telling people what they expect, um, and 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 following through on that is huge. For musicians specifically, are there any types of posts that you find perform really well, or that, does it depend on the artist? Depends on the artist. I mean, you you hear all kinds of things, just, you know, more specifically like about Instagram, where the, there was a theory for a while that carousel posts worked the best because the person was staying on their phone, looking at your posts, going through. Mm-hmm. Um, IGTV for a long time was everybody was about that because Instagram wanted it to work. So they gave more credit. Really what I think it comes down to is what are you most comfortable with? You know, are you, are you really good in front of a camera? Are you really good writing? Are you audio? Whatever it is, um, maybe you're all three, uh, whatever it is for you, I think is important. Um, but I think it's, it's more about finding your rhythm and finding who you are and what you can actually do. Um, you know, you get some people who are, they hear that they're supposed to do a Facebook live and, but they're like really bad <laughs> talking with people. You know what I mean? Well, then you probably like either you need to get someone to host it with you or you shouldn't do that. So it's really like, what do you feel comfortable with? What do you like doing? Um, and, and go from there. There's not really any specific, like this works better uh, than others. And I think the other side of it too, is just like thinking about the form of it of like, you know, knowing that people are probably going to, unless you hook them right away, they're going to skip your video unless, you know, things like that, just kind of thinking through some of that might help you and your, the content you're creating. Mm -hmm. But yeah, those would be a couple of the thoughts around that, I guess. Uh, You talk a lot about um, on Instagram specifically um, going back and looking at the posts that are performing well. How do you do that? So I call this the over indexing post. So what you want to do is this is a great place for people to start. Like how do like, what do I need to post? go back and look at your Instagram performance and get, there's a lot of tools out there too that will tell you your average like likes and comments and engagement rate. Uh, socialblade.com is a great one, uh, but there's a ton. So go find your average likes. Let's say you average 25 likes per post, okay? Uh, and three comments. Go back and look and just scroll your feed and hover your mouse over it or look on your phone. Any post that doubles that amount, that gets 50 likes, um, that gets 10 comments over three, write that down, like make a note of that, right? What you're wanting to try to find out is why. That's what you were constantly want to ask the question. Was it the picture I used? Was it that I used a certain hashtag? Was it um, the time I posted it? Was it the style I posted it in? Try to find a theme that you can start to test. And then you're just going to start testing. So you're going to look and you go, man, that picture of me uh, sitting in my studio, like I, you and I talked about this, like there's a picture of you in your studio that performed really well. Why was that? Was it that people like grabbed onto that fur? Was it clear? And you're going to start testing that. And so the content then you start to create is you're going to start to try to see like, do people like more videos? Like this video performed really well. Was it because it was a video of me or was it a picture of me? Or was it because I wrote all the lyrics or I wrote a long Instagram post about why I wrote this song. Mm -hmm. So asking those questions and and try to figure that out, those will be clues to, to why, like to how to get more people to interact with your content. Okay. Do you have anything that you would say specifically about uh, release strategies for, for artists and what those should look like? I know you already mentioned, like, don't do two weeks. Like, you should be thinking about this six months ahead. Like, what kind of things do you think about when you're helping someone with that? Yeah, so again, I think the marketing starts when you walk in the studio um, or when you're writing that song. So you're always thinking about how can I set this up? Yeah, yeah. I think that it's, it's, imp- it's, it's a very fine line, right? Because if you talk about a song and you don't put it out for too long, people are good, forget about it. Right. So there's that. Um, I think the marketing though, it's, if it was up to me, it would start nine months before the album comes out. Now that's more of a traditional release schedule. Now mm-hmm. we're in the single release schedule. So it's a little different, but you know, the other side of it is I just, I just was having a meeting about this. We have an artist who's coming out with a song May 8th and then she's coming out with a song in June. That gives that May 8th song four weeks to breathe. That's probably not enough time. So th- there's, there's really, there's really no right way to, to do it. I would say, 
Um, but what I would say for anyone releasing a song is what you want to do is you want to have a splash, but you also want to have, you want it to keep going up. When I, when I did work at the record label, everything was about sales. So what you'd see is it'd be like, you know, album comes out 40,000 albums sold. Great. Mm -hmm. Um, which when I was working there was, you know, was a really good 40 to hundred, which is crazy because they used to not be like that. Uh, but 40,000, then we knew pretty traditionally like that next week, it's going to cut in half. And then it's going to cut in half. It's going to cut in half, cut, cut in half. So that's natural. But I think the way that you can do it is if you can put a song out and you can get a good pop, but then kind of think about it in like, what's the second wave of this? So what's my next, like in two weeks, how do I get it to where my mom and grandma have, uh, um, are not the only ones streaming the song, right? Mm -hmm. Or watching my video. So it starts early. It starts with you prepping your audience. But really, a lot of that is more that relational. It's that giving, right? So it's it, maybe it's not necessarily about that song. It's more about you. Um, it's brand building. But then after that, it's what are the things that I have set up to, to release this song? So I'll give you, a, a, for instance, with this artist I was talking about. So uh, we have a pre-save campaign that starts this week. Uh, we're going just to the super fans, focusing on them. Mm -hmm. We're doing a little pre-listening party to the super fans a week out where they get an exclusive invite to that. Song comes out on Friday the May 8th. And then from there, we're doing a, a podcast for her. So she's doing five episodes that are launched that next Monday, every Monday, five episodes. And then at the end of the month in May, we're doing a virtual tour for her around the song. So it's kind of, you can kind of see how we're kind of chunking it out. And so it's like just when the song kind of, you know, is not top of mind, boom, we're going to hit you with another thing that gives you another experience around the song. Right. So those are kind of some of the things that you can think about. It's, it's that if you think about it is, I'm going to do five to six months of brand work so that when I put this product out there, people will go and hit buy. And then beyond that, I'm going to have things that keep them touching it and keep them interacting with the product, the song, whatever it is that you have. Um, that would be, that would be kind of the ideal strategy. When you talk about the whole, the branding side and the giving part of it, like what kind of things are you talking about? Um, like where, like, can you give us some examples of something someone else has done for their audience or their super fans that's creating value to keep them engaged with them? Yeah. So for me, it's all about story, uh, telling a story and, and having a story to tell is massive. Um, so that starts with a, again, goes back to knowing who you're talking to. You know, you're not making music for everyone. You're making music for a specific genre. So then from there, it's like, well, who are those people and what are they experiencing and why are they connecting to me? Mm -hmm. um, there's a, uh, I saw this the other day and I, I kind of wrote something about this and the quote that I came up with was be a lighthouse to like-minded people. So how are you uh, attracting people who are either going through the same phase of life or the same phase of philosophy or the same phase of, of relationships, whatever that is. So if you can figure that out of who you're talking to, that's step one. Then step two is starting to talk about you as your story. What is your story? What are you experiencing? I had a call with a guy yesterday uh, who was a cartoonist and he uh, was, was doing a lot of work and just stopped, got depressed, got unmotivated. Mm -hmm. uh, he reached out to me um, and we started talking about it. And one of the things that we were talking about was because he was currently working on some, some projects uh, right now and he had some NDAs he had to sign and this and that. And I was like, that's fine. But how can you build an audience based off of people who are very interested in cartoons, whether it be drawing or learning, or like there are people out there who are like wishing they were you. So how do you tell your story through that? This is how I got started. This is um, my experience. When I walk into a, a studio, you might be wondering what that's like. Here's what it's like. Mm -hmm. uh, continuing to tell that story of who you are and sharing that and serving your audience based off of their, their interest is how you build your brand. Mm -hmm. And they connect with you. There's a documentary on Netflix about Kevin Hart mm -hmm. and uh, Kevin Hart, the actor. Yeah. I would go watch that. That's a perfect example of someone building their brand. But I don't know if you're like me, but I'm like this. Anytime I watch a story about anything that has a, that's like developed a story and you naturally attach, I'm all in. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of that person. Um, I watched one on Netflix about Formula One racing. I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. But it was because it was about their story. It, it hooked you. And, and so if you can think about that way of like, how do I share my story, my experience, my journey, this is my perspective. That's how you, that's how you develop your brand. Right, right. It goes a lot farther than just a, a playing a song at a restaurant and follow me on Spotify. <laughs> you know? Totally. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, 
the, the real truth is this. You have to be honest with yourself about what you're doing. There's a lot of, ex, there's a lot, there's really easy to make a lot of excuses as to why it's not working for you, right? Mm-hmm. So yes. it's really easy. Well, it's easy for me to say, I couldn't write a song to save my life, but it's really easy maybe for you to write a song and play it. The, 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 the challenge is, is to be honest with yourself and go, why would someone ever follow me on Spotify if I did that? You know, so is it, you know, are, are you compelling enough to get people to follow you on Spotify or are you just kind of like, you know, halfway doing it of going, well, I wrote my song, like we kind of talked about earlier. So I think that's the thing that people really need to think about is, and this is a question I ask myself a lot. And sometimes the answer is no, but it's, will, would this stop me? Would, would I stop scrolling in my feet? Would I hit play on that? Would I listen to this longer than 30 seconds? No, I really need to consider either how I make that better or uh, not post it at all. Sure. And I, I think it's the same for artists. Like you wouldn't put out a half-baked song. You would finish it. You would want to get it completed. Uh, and so just, yeah, like you said, like sitting at a coffee shop playing a song and go, man, if you guys would follow me on Spotify, that'd be awesome. Well, yeah, everybody wants that. Everybody wants people to follow them, you know, yeah. around. Give them a reason. Um, just a couple finishing up yeah. questions, Kyle. Um, and I really thank you for your time. It's, it's yeah, this is this awesome. is fun. I, uh, it's fun for me to be able to, to chat and I like the sound of my own voice. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right in your, uh, that's right in yeah. your bio on Instagram yeah, it's, about the things I wish. <laughs> this is just, uh, you know, it's just stroking my ego and my wife appreciates it too. Cause then I won't come home and talk to her about all this stuff. So, um, so say we had an artist local to me wanted to reach out to you and mm-hmm. talk to you more about getting more strategic with their stuff like what are the different tiers that you were telling me about before of how you work with artists yes so i've got a couple different options um so the simple like a simple one is i have this thing called an instagram or youtube audit it's just a, i perform an audit on your account it goes deeper than the typical like you know but kind of a little bit of what we've talked about here but typical than like you know use this hashtag and post good images this dives into your account and really talks about the over indexing stuff looks at your engagement, looks at your numbers, gives you a good picture of your account, and then spits out suggestions based off of that information. Mm -hmm. So I have that. Then I have what I call record in a day. And so record in a day is a coaching thing. Uh, It's either in person or or virtual. And basically I walk you through everything I've talked about. So we put a marketing plan together either for the year, six months, whatever it is. And what it does is it provides you an opportunity to, uh, flush out a real marketing plan with real ideas and real objectives and then how you're going to get them done so you're going to walk away with a marketing plan that you can follow and you can refer to then i also have kind of like a um a 101 like foundational building type thing uh where that's a, another day where i just what we talked about earlier like making sure that your instagram and facebook and youtube are all optimized and set up correctly making sure you ha- you know how to run an ad uh making sure that you have facebook uh, audiences set up. Make sure you have an email list, that you have a funnel, that you have um, a welcome email. Those kind of things. Those things that a lot of people neglect, um, but are really valuable and really important. And then out of that, you walk away with a uh, audience as well, like who your core audience is. You get personas out of that. Um, and so the, my big thing is I like to have people walk away with something tangible, not just someone talking and say, you should go do this. It's like they can really walk away with something. And then the last one is just either retainer uh, retainer work or consulting, um, ongoing basis, bigger projects, stuff like that. It's kind of a, another service I offer. Cool. Um, just tell us what you're doing right now, since we're in this crazy quarantine time of yeah. life right now, tell us about what you've been doing. Um, you've been doing some free stuff for people. Yeah, it's been awesome, man. I, it's funny, like a couple of weeks ago, I was like, how can I help people? And I was like, I, I'm pretty connected with some people here who can provide some value. So I'm just going to start interviewing them on, on Instagram live. And I really had fun. And so it kind of re-kicked my energy of like creating content. Mm -hmm. So uh, it set me on this journey to like, for once in my life, treat myself as I would an artist. So I've created a content calendar for myself and I've run ads and I like, it's been fun Um, and creating content for myself. So I've been doing that a lot. I'm trying to post daily, like I said, uh, and I've I've got a Facebook ads trainer going on right now. Um, I'm releasing episode two today of like how to create a Facebook ad. I've been waiting for I'm that. Doing a, yeah, I'm doing account reviews. Um, uh, every Friday I'm doing an Instagram account review. Uh, and then I'm just trying to post like 
here's how to create a content calendar and here's why you do it. And what I discovered about myself was I don't, I, I can do it and I like to help people, but I don't enjoy like making content that's like, here's what an Instagram post is. Here's how you make it. Here's how you write it. Like, I don't really enjoy those type of things. What I enjoy is making like the why behind it or like here's a strategy behind it or here's a tactic you can try a little bit deeper. So that's kind of the, I've, I've kind of created that content. And then again, it's like putting my own, uh, you know, my own advice to, to work here. I've been really diving deep in like, who am I helping and what do I want to help with? And what's been really cool is what I talked about earlier was just posting like consistently. Mm -hmm. I'm getting these people who are like the guy I talked to yesterday. I mean, I talked with him for free. I was more than happy to, um, we had a great conversation and, but I'm, but then also I got one of the biggest worship artists uh, in Christian music, reaching out to me through a friend uh, wanting to work with me. So it's like, wow. it's been cool to like see how that's kind of flown. Um, and it, you know, it, you know you you're, taking, what you're, you're advice you're giving, right? And yeah, exactly. And it's, yeah. it's one of the things there's guy, Casey Neistat, if you want to talk about like story and like brand building, he's amazing. Go to YouTube and just type Casey Neistat and you'll, you'll watch all of his vlogs because he's incredible. Um, and then you'll want to be him. So Casey, uh, he talks about this concept of like, he knows what it was like when he wasn't posting on social media. He knows what that life was like. What he doesn't know is what, when he posts. And that's because you never know what's going to happen. You never know when someone sees that video or, or connects with that thing. So he knows what the life is like when he wasn't posting because there weren't opportunities coming in. But when he started posting, more things started happening. Um, things completely unexpected that he never would have thought. For instance, he created an, a tech company and sold it to CNN. And so he wouldn't have been able to do that without creating the company, marketing it, putting himself out there. That would never have happened if he would not have done that. And so that's, I'm trying to take that advice for myself of just putting myself out there. Um, I mean, I had someone reach out to me that I knew from eight years ago and was like, hey, can you help advise us on this website? And it was just like, it's just crazy. So I think that's, that's been really cool for me. It's really rewarding, but ultimately like I'm doing it because um, I just, it's really fun for me to talk about it. Cool. Cool. Um, so uh, we're, I, I would suggest that everybody go and check out your stuff because I find it very really practical. Um, Thank you. It already helped me out a little bit. And we had a conversation about an hour last week and already got me all on some things. So I, it's, it's yeah. been helpful. Which, so and Oh, you can find me, yeah, Kyle Reed on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I, I, Kyle Reed on Facebook. And then, uh, yeah, and then my website is reeddigital.agency. So reeddigital.agency, you can check that out. It's got all my info there. Um, and a perfect example I'll tell everybody here is go check out Jason's Instagram. He, he changed, and you should make a video about this, um, okay. of the change you made. I think, you, I think you're a perfect example of someone who thought about his audience took it into effect and changed it over. And I, I, there's a lot we can learn. So. Okay, cool. Yeah. Make cool. that video. <laughs> cool, man. Well, thank you so much for. Just Absolutely. And uh, I'll catch up with you another time. Yeah. Just message me anyone who wants to chat. I'm more than happy. Most of the time, like I've been doing these free 30 minute consulting calls. So I, cool. I, I'm more than happy to talk and help. And if there's, if I can help you, that's great. If not, we we've become friends. Sounds good. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, you too. All right.